Affairs story, President Nana Dodanko Kufado has identified the electoral process as the greatest source of potential conflict on the continent. For him, the many disputes around the continent could be traced to the dissatisfaction with the conduct of elections. Addressing a gathering of academia and the diaspora community at the California State University in the United States of America, President Ekufuado said despite the flaws, the ballot box represents the surest way in electing leaders. The truth is that peace, freedom, and prosperity walk in tandem. I might add, the respect is often the unstated but constant companion of peace, freedom, and prosper prosperity. And whenever these three go, respect always follows. When a country is peaceful, free, and prosperous, it is respected. If the African continent is to take its rightful place in the world, it has to shed its image of instability and overcome the wars that have plagued us for so long. Those who seek to play meaningful leadership roles in Africa would necessarily have to prioritize the establishment of a peaceful atmosphere on the continent. I do not talk here about the peace that we find in the cemetery. Nor do I wish for us the security of the bonded slave market. The peoples of the African continent are vibrant, even loud people, and long may that continue. I am talking about taking advantage of the dynamism and the youthful exuberance of the people to build the orderly and prosperous societies that promote peace. I'm talking about building the free societies that promote the spirit of competition, and at the same time, recognize that there will always be some that require the safety nets provided by humane and civilized societies. And President Ekufado also received the Africa Peace Leadership Award by the Center for African Peace and Conflict Resolution of the California State University. This was before the president delivered uh, the keynote address at the 27th Africa Peace Leadership Award Ceremony in Sacramento in the United States. The president in his speech urged the next generation of African leaders to seek peace and prosperity on the African continent. He stressed that African countries uh, will only become prosperous if leaders sought and cherish peace. <laughs> If I were pressed, I would mention in particular the electoral process is the greatest source of potential instability. The trigger for many wars and disputes around the continent can be traced to the dissatisfaction with the conduct of elections. We in Ghana have gone through our own traumas about elections. There have been boycotts. There's been anger, and there's even been a famous election petition before the courts. I cannot say we have a totally reliable electoral system yet, but it is improving every time and deserving of the growing confidence of the people. We look on with some anxiety at the goings on in the United States of America when we hear about the integrity of her famed electoral process being questioned. It is not to say we're watching these events keenly. We know that the electoral process remains for many African countries one of the weak links that pose security threats to our democracies and the stability of our governance. Well, we have to come back to Ghana. And the police in Kaswa, in the central region, they have arrested some 130 suspected criminals in a swoop conducted in the early hours of Sunday. At least three of the suspects were said to be on the police wanted list. Kaswa Divisional Police Commander ACP Ajimang Ajim confirmed the arrest of the suspected criminals at a press conference. Richard Kujinya Akun was there and has filed the report. 
The swoop was carried out at a crime-prone area in the early hours of Sunday in an effort to rid the locality of criminals. The increasing population at Kaswa is making the combating of crime very difficult in recent times. The area always tops the crime statistics of the central region, sparking security concerns. The police rounded up 130 of the suspected criminals, with three of them that have been on the wanted list of the police. Knives, seizures, quantities of tramadol, and substances suspected to be cocaine and other narcotics were found. ACP Ajem Ajeman is the Kaswa Divisional Police Commander. We were arrested um, about 130 um, persons. These are not criminals. These are suspected criminals. We are going to screen them and those who have issues with us uh, will deal with them. So far we have identified about three or four of them who are on our wanted list and those who have cases with us that um, are in the court. So we would, afterwards we'll profile the others and see if any of them have records with the police. At the end of the soup, we had some drugs, tramadol, valium, um, cannabis, and some powdery substances. Uh, we will send all of them to the laboratory and uh, we will examine them. And those who have flouted the law and are in possession of these uh, exhibits would be taken through the due process. The divisional commander indicated that the police was ready to combat crime and urge the general public to provide the outfit with the necessary information since policing is a collective endeavor. One of the measures we want to take to bring down crime in this um, area is to make sure that we make the place unsuitable and unpalatable for the criminals in our midst. We have entered a new phase in policing in Kaswa, and we are not going to allow any miscrime to make our lives uncomfortable. We will deal with them, and we are coming at them. So they should be careful because we will not tolerate them. We will make Kaswa an unpalatable place for them. We also entreat you as press persons and the general public to provide us with information because you live with the criminals. They are your relatives. You know them. So please come and give us information so that we can deal with them. Don't come to us only when they have done the things you don't want to you, but come to us when you see them doing the bad things. Because as citizens, it's our responsibility to do that. So we expect that the public would assist us. Policing is a collective endeavor. You help us to help you. You have employed us, and it's your responsibility to give us the things to do our work with. So bring information. Let us together rid our society of these miscreants. The police are assuring residents the exercise is not going to be a nine-day wonder. A series of such suits would be conducted at diverse locations in the central region. Richard Kwejo Joy News, Kaswa. Up north, the Dafiema Busie Isa district is still without a presiding member. Members of the assembly voted for the sixth time since October, but failed to gather two thirds required to elect a presiding member. The absence of a presiding member for the assembly has made structures of the assembly incomplete. As a result, stalling some administrative procedures at the assembly. John Yusapa West Regional Correspondent Rafik Salam reports from Misa. The Dafima Bure is a district assembly, like four other assemblies in the Upper West region for close to a year, has been struggling to elect a presiding member for their various assemblies. A couple of them have voted twice, but has been unsuccessful. But in the case of the Dafima Buse Isa, they have made four attempts, but have always failed willfully. 23 members of the assembly converged for the fifth time with the hope that this time round, a lady's luck will smile on them to enable them break the dark. They are required to win two thirds of members present and voting. The two arch rivals are the incumbent assembly member for Kajipere Saf, Semba Harona, 
an assembly member for a certain way, vai to zingi, they lobbied and cuddled the local legislatures for a few minutes before the voting started. The story was, however, not different as vai to zingi won the contest but was too vote shy from the presiding member's position. After consultation from members of the House, it was agreed that they should have a rerun of the election. Well, it will be good enough for all of us to go home with a peaceful night in mind of having the PM. And I think today there is a little bit difference, and we can make a difference by having out our differences and getting the PM, even if it means one certain standing down for the other. Thank you. Vitus Yenge again increases lead with one vote, but again was not enough to preside meetings at the assembly. Earlier, the district chief executive for the Fema Bure Isa, Mora Sanda Nadi, spoke on a wide range of plans by the assembly to improve the living standards of the people. The Fema Bure Isa District Assembly in 2017 completed the construction of a medical laboratory whilst work on the doctor's bungalow is about 95% complete with funding from our share of the district assembly's common fund at a cost of 177,000 Ghana cities and 210 Ghana cities respectively. As I informed you last year, a native of the district has pledged to personally finance the construction of an outpatient department with consulting rooms as part of the broad plans to have a district hospital by the end of 2019. He has picked a consultant for the project he has brought some materials to the site and work is expected to start soon. A, con a contract was also awarded for the supply of 500 pieces of brown desks and 20 teacher tables and chairs, all valued at 130,000 Ghana cities. I must also, also add that efforts to get Ghana Education Trust Fund as well as the Social Investment Fund to support us with ed educational infrastructure for our proposed ESA senior high and the basic level are receiving serious attention. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam, ESA. And Ashanti, communities in the Amanse West District will receive two US dollars from each ounce of gold mined from the Asanko Gold Ghana. Well, the mining firm has established a social responsibility forum to create a consolidated fund for communities in which they operate. Manager of the company, Charles Amwa, explained the concept to journalists during a familiarization tour. We have started what we call the SRF, uh, which is the Social Responsibility Forum, which uh, together with the communities, the company has agreed to give $2 Every hour that is uh, produced. Once we've gone through all the processes and the procedure, we expect the uh, fund to be inaugurated in the next uh, few months, for which all the accrued um, dollars will then be used for community uh, development through the board of trustees and the team that will be set up. And the projects to be executed will be determined by the communities themselves for which uh, Asanko together with the Board of Trustees. Asanko uh, is in here to do gold mining. Uh, we also want to offer ourselves as a catalyst for development. And we realize one way of uh, actually getting this development done is through this fund that we are going to set up, which will ensure that uh, we give back to the community what we're taking it out through the SR SRF. Well, that'll be it for the latest news update. We have more news as we review the newspapers and also look at what the stories are on the various um, news outlets and also the information portals. But let's look at this. Part of the Malam Interchange Bill to complete the George Walker Bush Highway, they have been turned into a site for open defecation. Joint news checks also reveal that other sections of the land around the interchange are being used by cheaper truck drivers a sun and stone transfer station. Join us, Joseph Akable has been following the story in our reports.
This is the Malab Interchange, part of the six-lane dual carriage George Walker Bush Highway, funded by the United States Millennium Challenge Corporation. It's got multiple overhead bridges that help motorists avoid any gridlock on the ground. However, this beautiful architecture has an ugly side. I'm sure my dressing may give me away as not being appropriately dressed for this task. But what I don't get wrong when you see me is the fact that I may be at some workshop working. But would you be surprised when I tell you that I'm standing right underneath the Malam interchange? Take a look for me from right above. You realize that this is the interchange. In other parts of the world, you have it developing in terms of parks and various gardens beneath it. But the situation is different here at the Malab Interchange. The land around the interchange has now been taken over by people for various activities. At the southeastern end of the interchange, evidence of burning of car ties is visible. The people burn a lot of refuse here. That's not all. There is a strong stench around. It's obvious part of the site is used as a place of convenience. The eastern part has auto mechanics who have pitch camp in makeshift structures. We sell sand and stone. We do not produce them here. We have vehicles that bring them from the quarry. There are people who do not need much. We serve them. Edward Kwanza, who is in his mid-50s, is one of the leaders of this sand and stone transfer station. He knows the history behind business activities here. Before we used to be at the other side. That was before the interchange was constructed. When they finished, the place was bare. So we had to come to enable us to get closer to the tipper drivers. We manage the two sites. We are not just here. Edward and his colleagues are unwilling to move. The AME officials do not intend to allow us to have tents here. We have heard the land belongs to government. We decided to be under the bridge to avoid the scorching sun. However, admits the occupants may prove stubborn if government is ready to use the land. When you live at a particular area for long, it's tough to move. In fact, very tough. So you will be forced to resist, but the owner has the right and can use all means to evict you. But you must also find ways and means of doing your work. We are quite satisfied here. This notwithstanding, there is a danger here. On several occasions, vehicles have fallen off the bridge. Oh, said their cars, men, I'm sure. Oh, a monster, do say. It's not so scary. We are managing here for now to enable us fend for our families. This is a story about land left to be occupied by squatters. It's a story about people risking their lives to run businesses while fast moving vehicles glide past above. Well, that'll be it for now. We're taking a break. When we come back, 
Well, we'll bring you a review of the newspapers. I'll be joined by Mavi Sobani. You're looking sweet this morning, as always. And please, while we're on break, make sure you get interactive. Let us know what you think. Join us on TV. It's our regular page on Facebook. And you can always watch us live through our channel on YouTube, Major Online TV. We're taking a break. When we come back, review of the newspapers up next. We'll stay on.